Right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our webinar tonight. We've got um, something that we've put together over the last few months. We, we actually would like to share it with everybody because if you can benefit from this, then everyone else can benefit from this. If we've benefited, you can benefit. So we're going to share a few things tonight with you. It's just more or less our story. If, if, you, if you really want to benefit from this, I would suggest that you, you know, write some of the stuff down, especially that which is applicable to you that you can use. And if you at least take one hint or one piece of advice, that will help you a lot in the future because we do not have the time or the amount of days and years left in our life to fix our problems. Everything needs to start today. What you do today makes a big difference to your, your life. So if you have a look, there's a little chat box on your screen. Um, I'm just going to type in the box, type here. If you want to ask any questions, we will answer it either during the presentation or afterwards. And yes, when I say we, that means there's two of us here. So let me just get my video camera on so that you can see. Okay, well, now we just <laughs> need to get... Hello, everyone. <laughs> so there's my wife Nelda. She's smiling all nicely. She's actually bathed and um, dressed and the nice <laughs> perfume on. So <laughs> she doesn't realize that. <laughs> no, she does. <laughs> she just wants to look and smell good for this presentation. So what I'm going to do is um, sit a little bit nearer so that I can see you. I, hopefully all of you can see my presentation, my slides that I'm going to show you. I put them together so that you can at least have some, some picture of what's going on. All right, so we, we moved to Cape Town end of July last year, and we'd like to just share a few things with you. I'm going to actually just play, uh, I just want to take one, one person. Uh, Dave, can you see my slideshow? Uh, in the corner of my... Okay, all right. I can now, yeah. No, yeah. All right, good. Okay, I'm going to take the, the um, our, our video off. I'm going to stop the video, and then hopefully you can still see my slideshow. Unmute, make sure that I'm unmuted, that you can hear me. And there we go. Hello, folks. So we thought we'll put a little webinar together for you folks to share some of our journey with you and some of the stuff that's happened in the last six months to six, seven months. Of course, it's related to you know, finances and stuff like that. And we, we noticed that almost everybody we, we meet and have met recently have got some kind of issue with their finances. So I thought I'm going to make a short video clip for you before we get started with the main webinar and, and discuss with you a few things that are that have become, you know, that have changed for us. decisions 
not based on what other people have told us, but because we were led to come right here and spend time in Cape Town and see how many people we can help. Because we've been the root of all sorts of Ponzi schemes and uh, network marketing, and there's a lot of good, good, good ones out there, but you as traders, you as people can make your own money, you know? So let's take you upstairs. I'm gonna go upstairs now and show you the view that we have and maybe discuss one or two things. Right, so we're gonna go outside now again and show you the view. You see the beautiful cloud, you see cloud almost all the time when we stay here and we are we are blessed to be able to share this. Folks, there's nothing in this world that makes anybody deserve anything except a thankful heart because thankfulness is what helps a person see yourself in the bigger picture. They say the bigger picture, I'm talking about the picture of life. If we had to look at uh, Google Maps, zoomed in on, on us, we would probably not even see ourselves. So what we would like to do is just to share some of the stuff that happened when we came to Cape Town and how we made the decision to come here and the effects that it has had for us. You know, nobody knows if we're still going to be around or we're still going to be um, living here for how many months. You know, there's been some ordeals and stuff like trouble in South Africa, but we are, we love our country and we love to be here and we love to, to share with people and, and help so many people with their predicament. And a lot of the predicament that we find ourselves in affects us emotionally, financially, uh, physically, everything. It, it works as one. So if you're Finances are in a mess. You probably find that you're struggling with some health problems and vice versa. And you are probably fighting a lot more with people around you. So um, we, we want to live and to be, live a life that is more balanced. So let us share some of the journey with you now. All right, folks, I hope you could hear that and see that. Um, hi there to Peter and Martin. Welcome, thanks for replying in the chat box. I can help you make money, but what are you going to do with it when you earn it? If you've not had education on finances and found yourself in a fix, your money, will take you back to the fix you found yourself in even before you started making the money. The problems with money always start with little or no education or no application of the education. I started in the 1990s with my money education and the the big thing was, that was still with, with the days of Amway. And I, I started with four books. And if you've not read any of these four books, then you need to at least get to start reading one or two of them. And because that shifted my mindset during the, the 90s, I was in deep financial trouble and... I had to find a way out. And then I actually, when Robert Kiyosaki came to South Africa, it was either 97 or 1999. And I still got a photo somewhere where I stood with him and he was talking about what he had learned. And during that time, I was deep in financial trouble and I'd learned 
some basic fu fundamentals, basic principles to get myself out of debt. So what I did was I decided I'm going to apply everything I've learned from his basic teaching. And it became, I became debt free within six to eight months. And I was starting to run my own business. Of course, in the meantime, I became a pastor in a church and I had to leave everything. And basically in 20, uh, a few years ago, I had to start all over again. So when we talk about finances, we talk about a vicious circle. Finances, um, your relationship with your partner or your family and your, your relationship with money could probably be more or less be seen as the same. And it becomes a vicious circle because it affects everything about your life that you can't sleep, you can't think properly, you can't operate properly. Everything is about money. And the more you think about your money problems, the more you spend money, the more you waste money. So what we did was when we arrived in Cape Town, some of the things that happened we're going to share with you and and Nala will also share some some information with you that from her, her point of view because it's always interesting to hear a woman's point of view and and she's smiling now <laughs> so some people are overwhelmed with in different kinds of debt and of course we all have different kinds of debt which are getting us or slowly but surely getting us into trouble in fact, I, if there's a bit of time later, I'd like to actually mention a story of a friend of mine who got into financial trouble a, a short while ago and the advice I gave him. So lots of people will tell you how to make money and you will make money. But even if you make m more money, you would probably spend more of it. So that, that is the, the sad reality of, of money. And hopefully the information that we will share with you tonight, that you will take notes of that, the stuff that we have, we have actually practically applied. And then um, maybe there's some more, more that you can learn from us afterwards from one of the courses that Nala will be giving. Okay, I'm giving the, the, the microphone over to her now and she's gonna tell her story, a little bit about her background, and then on our, our event of our trip to Cape Town and, and the things that happened over here. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone, it's so nice to be part of the, the webinar on, um, you know, behind the microphone. I'm normally in and out and in one of the other rooms doing, minding my own business. So just to tell you, for those who don't know me very well, some of you do have my, um, <laughs> hello. <laughs> some of you do know my story, for those who don't. Uh, I got divorced a good 10 years ago. And through the divorce and a whole lot of turmoil, I lost everything. And just before I lost everything, you know, sometimes you see there's like a light at the end of the tunnel. Just before I lost everything, my attorney died. And that made things a whole lot worse for me. And if I say I lost everything, I lost my house, I lost my car, the bank came, they drove my car away. That was pretty much not a very good situation to be in. And the little bit I had left, the sheriff came and he, he wrote all of that up as well. So I was really left with just a few of my personal belongings and I had to start from scratch going through a divorce going through a sequestration uh, uh, losing everything was hard it was really one of the hardest things that ever happened to me now my dad is a retired chartered accountant my son is an accountant my in fact my whole my father's whole family everybody is qualified accountant or qualified CA so having a family like that and you know having to, to tell the family that you have been, you've, you've lost everything, was even harder. And there's a lot of emotion that, 
that gets created because of, of that. But one thing I knew is that I cannot live in the past and I do have the power to look at my circumstances and, and realize that I need to look forward and build from what I have where I was at that point in time. Four years down that line, I met Roel. And to be quite honest, I didn't want anything to do with any men in my life at that point in time. I, I was barely breathing financially. Fortunately, I still had my job. And so, yeah, for a relationship, there was really no time. And besides, my emotions was also very uh, up and down. So I met Roel, him being an entrepreneur. There was one good thing, and that was when I met him, he came from the ministry and he also had nothing. He also had to start from scratch. So the good thing for both of us is that we met each other at a point in time in our lives where we, we had to both start from scratch and build something up. And I remember in the first six months of our togetherness, we sat in the lounge. It was in the Kippy days. For those of you who know Kippy, it's a Ponzi scheme. We totally believed in it at the time. And we um, one evening sat and we said, it was just when the Bitcoin uh, came out and we had to pay, help people pay subscriptions with the Bitcoin. And we sat in the lounge one evening and we decided we're gonna, we're gonna start a business together. And we were looking for a name for our business. And the name Bit by Bit came up. And we did, never thought that six years later that we will sit tonight having a webinar and you know, have in certain ways the wisdom to share with you guys you know, what we went through and how we got to where we are today from nothing. And if I say nothing, we really, really started from scratch, the two of us. So I met Roel and I realized that him being an entrepreneur and as our lives evolved, me having my full-time job, I'm going to have to make a plan and part with my full-time job and a career of 30 years in the corporate world. It was very hard because I got used to having that salary. At the end of the day, that salary was really the only thing that I had left. Uh, needless to say that my salary at that point in time was not enough uh, to cover absolutely everything and have savings and insurances and trying to recuperate from um, basically nine years of being insolvent and losing everything. So it took me two years to make a decision to leave the corporate world and not have that salary that comes in at the end of, on the 27th of the month or the end of the month. My dad always used to say that, you know, your salary gets paid in on the 27th of the month and your salary will give you the, your medical aid and your salary will give you your insurances, et cetera, et cetera. So I was really indoctrinated that without a salary, you cannot do anything. So life um, moved along and with the, the, still the doubt in my mind, should I or shouldn't I resign from my corporate job? I was able after nine years to apply to rehabilitate my estate. And that to me was a big thing. And I realized that there's a huge responsibility that comes with it. When I do apply for rehabilitation, nine years I've been on my own, nine years I've been through the struggles, had to turn my coins. And I didn't know whether I was ready to or worthy, financially worthy, to actually be able to be rehabilitated from my sequestration. Debt review is a long thing. We can, we can talk about debt review because I just, uh, I don't want to distract myself, but we can talk about debt review at some other point in time because there's a whole, there's like a whole 10, 15 minute talk I can give you or the pros and cons of debt review. So if any of you are in a situation where you are considering it, please feel free to pick up the phone and, and, and phone me uh, so I can give you the, the pros and cons. But to get back to my story, I realized the responsibility of you know, being financially sound and, and rehabilitated. So 
I said to Ruel, I need, I need something more. And we started a search and we went to a whole lot of seminars, business seminars, uh, people that know how to deal with their finances, etc. And it wasn't just one, it was a good between five and 10 seminars on different platforms, different people. And I just couldn't connect with those people. And I kept on saying to Raw Love, you know, I know I need to do all these things, but this is not what I'm looking for. So one day Raw phoned me up and he said to me, Chiki, we have got a, a workshop tonight. We're going to this workshop and I think this is going to be the workshop for you. So of course we went to this workshop. I wasn't keen. It was in the middle of winter and we sat there and I thought, mm, you know, do I really have to do this? And within the first 15 minutes of this workshop, I was totally convinced that this is what I need to do. Of course, at that point in time, I had some crypto money. I cashed in on my crypto money and I did a five and a half thousand rand course without even blinking an eye. And this girl was able to tell me where the core problem in my life came for me. I mean, my dad is a chartered accountant. How is it possible that having um, or being in a family, raised in a family where money has never been an issue, my dad's house is paid for, he's successfully retired, he's got loads of investments and he knows how to deal with money, how to work with money. But I grew up in that home and, and I don't know, I didn't know all those things. I didn't know those principles. But there was one belief which I would like to share with you quickly, is this girl asked me what was my very first and vivid money memory that I have. And it took me back and I clearly remember it till today, where in the morning when my dad went to work, I'm the only child, so when he went to work, he always came to kiss me goodbye. And I was of course still sleeping and he would always open my hand and put a few coins in my hand, close it, and then kiss me and went off to work. So what happened was, every morning, I wake up, and the first thing that I do is I open my hand, knowing that my dad left me some coins, but I couldn't find them, because of course I was rolling around and, you know, tossing and turning, and I had to lift the blankets and look under the bed and see where all my coins went. Sometimes I found them all, and sometimes I didn't. But the moral of the story is that I was the best part of 35 years old, 37 years old, and I was still looking for that money every month. So deep inside the core of my existence, I have a belief that I'm always looking for money and that money is not enough for me. That I open my hand, the money comes into my hand and the money goes out without me even having the satisfaction of that money is good enough or enough for what I need to do. So that's just a little bit of history. To, I have been rehabilitated successfully. I've taken responsibility of my finances. I've dealt with the mindset and the limited beliefs that I had around money. And I've realized a lot of things. And those are the things that we would ultimately like to share with you guys. And, you know, Royal and I are in the people's business. We want to help people to help themselves. And I've resigned the 1st of July in 2018. I took a 12-month sabbatical. My sabbatical was officially over last year, 2019, 1st of August. Feels like some days I'm still on a sabbatical. However, I have been operating behind the scenes. Look at him, he's nodding. <laughs> I hear it every now and again. But I'm working behind the scenes, helping him. Um, also inspiring him to the next level. So sometimes you see him and you see all these courses that he does and he's so dedicated in helping everybody. And I am running around in the background doing a whole lot of things because I'm also passionate about what he does. And which is another thing in terms of what we do is, is your relationships. Relationships are very precious and we need to, within all the turmoil of when it comes to finances and a lot of emotion, we need to also look after our relationships. So I have then equipped and qualified myself to become a uh, 
CETA accredited facilitator and assessor. And on that journey, I also came across a company with the name of Brightstar. And Brightstar have a lot of work, not workshops, not just workshops, but they've got one day programs and they also have three day courses and they're all accredited. But the one that I'm extremely passionate about is the finance course. I will talk about that a little bit later, but what I want to share with you guys right now is about five months ago, Rule said to me, Chiki, where can we cut our costs? We moved to Cape Town and we still had our shops in Pretoria. We had two shops. I had my shop running, Royal, we had Royal shop running. We had people working for us. And of course, we still had our um, uh, townhouse, which we bought just a year prior to, uh, prior to us moving down to Cape Town. And there was a lot of unnecessary expenses. And what I did uh, when he told me the first thing is, Chiki, where can we cut uh, expenses? I was thinking, you know, maybe groceries, maybe uh, electricity and things like that. But when I sat down and I started printing my bank statements and uh, rules bank statements and our business bank statements, and I put it on the table and I started reviewing all of these things, I did not only discover unnecessary costs that goes off that those bank statements. There were some ridiculous things that I was completely unaware because I was not in control of my finances anymore. I wasn't, I wasn't aware of what was going on in in all my bank accounts so moral of the story because this can get very long and involved and these are the kind of things that we practically want to help you guys with but i then from the bank statements made a whole lot of lists a, a whole list of things that we can look at to minimize our monthly expenses and within one month for every month after that i was able to help Royal and I to minimize our spend by 30% of our expenses. So right now for the past four months, we have been having the benefit of having 30% more finance money in our account to do other things with. And that's the ideal way anybody wants to be is to have more money at the end of the day to do those things that you want to do. We always tend to think, if only I can earn more money, if I can have more money, I've got, I can utilize that money to do the things that I want to do. The problem is that when you get the more money, you're going to have more money for one month, and then that money gets absorbed. So how can you take the money you currently earn, minimize your expenses, expenses and then have that extra 10 to 30% a month available to do those things that you would like to do? So in essence, I know I've touched a lot of aspects, a lot of things, uh, but I just wanted to give you a broad overview of what we have done and how we have done it in the last, in the last few months and where I come from. And all of you know, I mean, a lot of you have visited us at our house here in Cape Town. Moving down to Cape Town was faith. I have never um, been exposed to faith the way I was in the last 12, month in my, 12 months in my life. And so, yeah, I think let me hand back to Ruhl because this is the point where I start talking too much. And then I'll check in a little bit later to tell you more about this actual finance program that can change your life. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So let's get into the, into the deep side of things now. So hopefully you folks can still see my screen. We're going to talk about this journey and hopefully you can take notes for the things that would apply to you. Not everything applies to everybody. We all make different kinds of mistakes. Let me just bring my microphone a bit closer. Great. So we all make different kinds of mistakes at different times. So we, we, we actually came down to Cape Town with fair, a fair amount of expenses. We, our minimum expenses was around 25,000 rand per trip because we couldn't, when we look for accommodation, a hotel is a, probably about three to five times more expensive than an Airbnb. So we, we were in Airbnbs and believe me, some of those places were awesome and some of those places were like 
uh, sardine can. <laughs> but we were just happy to, to be able to have a place to sleep every night because we were working day and night doing, giving courses. And then, of course, uh, we decided, well, if we lived in Cape Town and worked from here, would it be more expensive? And we actually found that it would probably be around 10% cheaper living in Cape Town and working from here. And our customer base had obviously grown to more Cape Townians. Anyway, so I managed to convince Nala because she was very um, uptight about moving house. You know, the woman needs to, she's emotional being and she needs to be you know, really convinced. And then when I looked again, I saw her shopping and showing me houses and I know she's now ready for this, this action in her, in her life. So we decided we, we need to, when we live in Cape Town, we at least want to have a view of the water and or a view of the mountain. And because there were parts of Cape Town, and I'm not going to mention um, where we stayed, when you looked out the door, you thought you were in Germiston. Anyone that's been in Joburg or Germiston or some of those industrial areas, you, you know that it's a noisy place and it's flat and that you can't see anything. And we, we were praying about this and we decided now let's, let's, um, let's get, get to a place where we can have it and we got both. So if you folks saw that little video clip, we've got the water and we've got the mountains. And fortunately at that time, uh, for some of you who were trading with us, you would have known that we took profits in July of the, the um, we took big profits and we could then use those profits to furnish our house so that we didn't need to bring our furniture from home um, from uh, all the way from Pretoria. So we left our house in Pretoria and this is the journey that we started. So we found ourselves obviously in a new situation. We still had expenses and we had a place, two places to pay. In fact, as Nalda mentioned, and I actually forgot that she meant um, about it, we had each our own shop in Pretoria, the shop rent, electricity, and uh, she had a part-time employee and I had a full-time employee. So this was the thing we did. We said, and, and for, for me telling her to close her shop, she didn't, she, she didn't like that. So I said, well, then I'm going to close my shop too because if we're not bringing in business, um, after the Bitcoin price went up pretty high during the first six months of this year, and then it started dropping. And as it started dropping, people, traders were falling by the wayside they, and, and because they, they didn't, you know, they were holding on to coins that were devaluing in, 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 in rand or dollar value. But we had to, to cut these expenses. And my employee in Pretoria, he wasn't marketing or bringing in any income. So I said to him, he will now work for us if he still wants to work for us on a part-time basis and he will then do work and you get paid for the jobs. And we had an agreement and he's still doing work for me. He's still doing video editing and stuff for me. So, and I can still ask him to do things. So he has the freedom of doing his own thing, plus doing a lot of work for me and he gets paid per job. So both of us closed shop. We, we took all our stuff in the shops because it was pretty much short notice. It was the end of the month and we put it into storage. The storage is costing us 495 rand a month. It's a, it's, we had managed to get a, a small, smaller storage unit and save some money. Uh, between the two shops, we were close to 10 or 12,000 rand a month, down to 495 rand a month that we currently paying for that, for the space that we used. So we cut those costs drastically. Then I said to Nelda, but now we need to look at getting somebody to rent up the in, live in the place where we were staying. And we couldn't find somebody, and this is a problem in today's market. It's, it's not a, 
it's not a seller's market, it's a buyer's market and it's a, a renter's market. The place that we st we're staying in at the moment would probably be around three, three and a half million rand and we are paying 15,000 rand for this place, a five bedroom house with a huge training facility. So if you folk can imagine that buying a place at this point of time in Cape Town is doubly more expensive than actually renting a place. So there we, we're saving ourselves money. It doesn't make sense because everyone tells, tells you it's, if it's not your own place, it's not. Your, but we couldn't afford to go and buy a 4 million, 3 million rands place. And if we, we said we need a facility that can bring us money in also, just our food bill in Pretoria for our training was around 12, 13,000 rand a month because we were spending up to two weeks at a time in Cape Town and we had to feed the people. So my wife was willing to cut the costs there to cook food from home. So we're going to go in, in on, that, on that kind of um, expense cutting, uh, cost cutting right now. And, and before we carry on, we found somebody to rent our place. And, and our monthly expense on that is about, let's say 10,000 10, rand a month. We couldn't find somebody who was willing to pay more than what, 7,000 rand a month. So we are taking a little bit of a, a, a loss on the, the place in Pretoria, but we're still getting an income from it. So having a property, that you could rent but you don't rent is also that's costing you more money than trying to be a hard ass mm. wanting to not rent it out or you 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 want your price and so uh, anything you waste time with is is a loss of loss of money trying to be you know uh, so let's talk a little bit about expenses so one of the first things that is very easy to identify is cell phone contracts, data contracts. If you've noticed over the last few years how data in South Africa especially has become cheaper and cheaper. So if you had a contract that you were spending 400 Rand a month for, for two or three gigs and you didn't renew the contract, you're in trouble because you're still paying two, three, 400 Rand for that, those amount of gigs. So being lazy, not upgrading the contract is, is a mistake because we are using 10 times more data, gigabytes, than we used to use five or 10 years ago. And we didn't use as much data as we're using now. And when you do an upgrade of your cell phone contract, you, when you, you actually do an upgrade by lowering the price. So if you've done a contract of 400 or 600 Rand a month, you can bring it down to one or 200 rand a month and get exactly the same effect. And between the two of us, we probably got six or eight contracts, cell phone and data contracts. So we had to make a decision on which ones we're gonna keep and which ones we're gonna renew. Now, it would be stupid not up, upgrading your cell phone. And, and the reason being is your cell phone is a business tool. So if, if your cell phone is costing you a thousand bucks a month um, and you can get an upgrade, your upgrade can cost you six, seven hundred, get it because you need those business tools. Your cell phone can do more stuff than the cell phones could do five years ago, could do 10 years ago, do 15 years ago. When we got cell phones at two or three thousand rand in the beginning days of cell phone technology, they basically had games and a calculator and text messaging and, a, and making calls. Now your cell phone is a complete computer. You don't even need to carry a computer. Our traders are even are trading off their, their cell phones today and the cell phone is even much faster than the average i7 computer because it's got a quad core processor. So do not be skimpy on having a proper cell phone contract, but data contracts is what's eating you. You need to cut those data contracts. So we've saved quite a bit of money on our data contracts, not having too many and bringing them down. And actually something I'm, I'm going to 
mention that's later on, you guys are probably reading the, seeing the, the screen in front of you, is we had the option of fiber being installed in, in the area. And fiber gives you very high speed internet. And you can use the internet in your house. You can plug all your devices in and it doesn't influence the speed of, of your download. So if you're in business for yourself, make sure you got that we, so we could cut two other contracts straight away um, and, and save more money by bringing in the fiber. All right, and one of the things that, that Nalda has learned quickly is to see bargains when she goes shopping. And when I go shopping, I don't spend much time in the shop. I'm like, you know, there's one of those zip, zippy, zippy dudes running through the shop and and if she and I go shopping together, I take the trolley and I walk, and she's got to take the stuff off the shelf and run after me through the through the shop. And so she she knows that she must go shopping alone. But shopping around is so important. We we walk into a shop and we see these bargains on the shelf, but then we see this other other stuff on the shelf that is more expensive, but we're too lazy to go there. So we go, we buy everything at one shop. So Nelda and I, we go to at least three different places at once when we do our grocery shopping. So we save at least 20 to 30% every month just on our groceries and keeping an eyes open for bargains. And often what people do is when they get these brochures or these pamphlets or you know, inside these um, newspapers, they just throw them away. You should be excited about them because they have all the bargains inside. They have all the, the cheap. And make sure whenever you do go shopping, don't go shopping when you're hungry because you're going to buy more food and especially the, the junk food that you don't need. And shop when the shops are quiet on a Monday morning or a Wednesday morning is the best time to shop. If you're shopping on a Saturday or a Sunday, you're in trouble. You're frustrated. You, you, you're wasting time and money by standing in, in the shops. And believe me, the prices are higher when there's more people in the shops. Another thing we also found that we were spending money was eating out. If you take the average bill of eating out for a couple, it's it's ridiculous. Um, we worked out on one of our bills around three hundred rand. We could have we could have cooked meals at home. We could have at least fed ourselves four times between the two of us. And we 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 what we did was now this daughter is a good cook, or she's also a good. Cook. My <laughs> wife is a very good cook, but we end up sometimes being so busy that we don't have the time or have the energy to cook and then you end up buying either expensive food at a restaurant or take away junk food and you spend the time that you should be looking after your body health wise spending this money on unnecessary so we got a daughter and we found someone else in Cape Town thank you Lord um, we found someone in Cape Town to help us come in and cook food for us so the daughter would come in and for a full day cook a whole grocery list, like maybe 60, 60 meals. minimum 60 meals that we could put away and freeze, put them in the freezer. And if we were going to look at our program for the day and we knew that we only going to come back late afternoon, we would then take the meal out of the deep freeze in the morning and put it in the fridge and let it defrost so that when we get home, we can, we can warm it up and cook. So we got, and then of course, we use this point system, this um, pick and pay points. So when I throw a fill in, I, I use that smart shopper card, I swipe it there and we get points. And so make sure that when you put fill in, you're gonna use one of those loyalty cards, whichever, whether it's clicks or pick and pay or whatever, use those loyalty cards, e-bucks, 
uh, you are being wise by doing that. We had the DSTV. The DSTV, I said to my wife, you, you hardly ever watch DSTV. And, and we were paying, was it close to 600? Yeah, 65, I think. So close to 600 rand a month. And then we took this, the lowest package and we decided we're going to get Netflix. And if, if we ever need to watch something, we can choose what we're going to watch because, you know, when you watch television, you watch what someone else wants to show you on their time. But when, you, when you're busy, when you want to watch something, you want to watch what you want to watch. So you want to watch a documentary, you choose what, which one you want to watch. With DSTV, you don't have that, that option. So DSTV is ridiculously expensive. It's overpriced. Um, what we also did was to, to take away unexpected costs for, for the vehicle that we were driving is we paid the, uh, they call themselves liquid capital, is that mm -hmm. correct? Liquid capital, they, you, you pay them a monthly fee and then when it's time to service your car, they pay for the service. Because often when it comes to servicing a car, you, you're really in the dark, you, you, not, you really don't know what you're gonna pay for that service. And folks, it's so important for you to keep your car maintained. Do not skip any services. That is, that is like shooting yourself in the foot. Um, other expenses like money spent on alcohol. If you buy any alcohol, you pay three times more in a restaurant. When you buy um, water, one liter of water in, in the restaurant, one day we saw it was like 48 rand. And I said, but that's what, that's what breakfast costs. So you're charging me for a bottle of water for what a whole breakfast costs. So, have, and have a look at your, um, what do they call it? Your soft drinks and your, what is the one that's generally in the dog? The ciders. No. Uh, ice tea. Oh, uh, cappuccinos. Oh, cappuccinos. Cappuccinos are ridiculous. Don't buy a cappuccino. It's a bit of frothy milk with some, some a bit, bit of coffee and a lot of hot water. It's, it's just, you know, it's a, and, and iced tea. I was looking for that. Iced tea is the worst thing you can buy in a restaurant. Just don't, don't, don't waste your, your time and your money. You're paying too much for it. So make sure that when you buy, um, if, you, if you buy beers or alcohol, then you buy it at the shop where you're going to get it and you buy it in a six packs or 12 um, dozen, whatever, so that you don't pay the most expensive price. Can I add to? Yes. Sorry, guys. What we also did was our insurances. I looked at our vehicle insurance, our household insurance, and I shopped around. And I was able to bring it down by 600 rand. Uh, just our uh, short-term insurance on our vehicles and well, my vehicle and and household insurance. Obviously, we've got two houses, but I managed to bring that down by 600 rand. Another thing was also the medical aid. You know, all of us are probably not 20 anymore. And as you grow older, you do need a more comprehensive medical aid. And I had, we don't have a broker, but I still shopped around and I managed to speak to a few people. And we actually downgraded our medical aid package and we added a gap cover. So together with a gap cover insurance, including a, a lower medical aid um, option, we are covered better than the option that we were on for the last 12 months. And I also had a huge cost saving there. So if you add up all these, the, the, the savings, we, we literally save by everything that we did. 30% on our budget. And I cannot tell you how amazing it is at the end of the day to have that 30% extra to do the things that you really want to do. It's not that we don't have that money. We just avail that money, that 30% on our budget to do other things with. And it is an absolute amazing feeling to just feel in control of, of your finances. Another thing that we also looked at was our personal insurances. 
And there's a, also, these things need to be reviewed. And even though I have been very vigilant in renewing my personal insurances every single year in the beginning of the year, I could still save us some money there as well. It seems a lot and it seems very overwhelming when you start with this exercise, but I promise you, as you get more and more in control of your money um, and your money matters, it is an amazing feeling. Um, just talking about insurance, I've got my, um, this, myself a, a little run around vehicle. And when I went for uh, the insurance, they, they said 495 a month. And then there was this company that, that insures your car, but the less you drive it, in other words, if you're not using it for business, they insure it for less. Or they, they get your, your payments is less. It's a company called naked insurance so i went to them and for from 495 they brought it down to 125 in a month so there i'm saving a, a third or well, two thirds of what i'm paying for that insurance so there, there is a cost saving already if you just look around and uh, naked insurance is um, affiliate of hollard insurance and so they they are worth the worth to try. And then, all right, so let's carry on with, with this. Yeah, I'm going to get back to that other slide. So we hunted for bargains. We looked around. If we, we bought the tin tuna, if we get three for the price of two, we buy it. So look around for bargains. Never do all your shopping in one place. Find the brochures. Look at extra expenses. Now, one of the things I wanted to mention earlier is a friend of ours had has had a, a financial difficulty and between the two of them, they were using only one vehicle. Uh, and But they had two vehicles between the two of them. And it came to the point where he felt that his expenses were too much and he wasn't cutting any of his expenses, so he sold his car. And that was the wisest thing to do at that point of time. But then something else happened. He had this, he had this huge house and he wasn't willing to, and he was an entrepreneur, so somebody working from home and he had an office where he was, that he was renting for almost 10,000 rand a month and he had employees that he was paying and he wasn't getting any business in. So he ended up with a situation that he had probably one month that he could afford to pay his bond. And I said to his wife one day, why don't you bring, um, turn this huge garage of yours into a granny flat and get some income on it and your huge LARPA you can use as a training center or rent out. And his wife said, no. I don't want other people's bad energy over here. So I said, well, in that case, you guys have a problem because if you don't change something, if you don't change something about your finances now, end of next month, the bank is going to come take your house and then you won't have anything. They made the decision the next morning. They got, they got the, the agent in the area to come and have a look at their house. And within a week, they had a cash buyer. And before the end of that month, they had already some of the money in their account. And they moved out. Now, here's, here's, the, here's, the, here's the sad part. They, they got themselves into a financial predicament because of staying the same, doing the same thing. So they went to move into her parents' A place old like an old age complex big rooms big house and instead of moving in with them so that they could share the place they went and rented another place out for the parents so folks the more places you are renting out renting or paying rent for them if you can't justify that then you're wasting you're pouring money down the drain All right so you need to have a look at those expenses. Rent rooms out if you can. If look in the South Africa we're living in now, if if I think of 
of how many people that have had an extra bedroom on the, at the end of their house. And I've just opened the, the, the window, put the door in, put a little bathroom in, and they've rented it out to, to, to students. Or you can choose who you want to rent. Don't be scared of, of, of expanding your mind. Don't, the, the, the worst thing that anybody can do with their finances is do nothing. Because nothing changes if you do nothing. It's like rust. If you've got bad finances, it's like rust accumulating. It doesn't rust, doesn't fall away. It doesn't clean itself. And that's what, what inaction does. Sorry, AB, like Airbnb. A lot of people go the Airbnb route. And Ruel and I, for nine months, we stayed in, sometimes when we were in Cape Town for the 10 days, we stayed in two different Airbnbs. And I can promise you, we, we have... We have got a lot of experience in Airbnb. I have personally helped a lady to set up one of her rooms as an, as an Airbnb. If you thinking of doing that and you need guidance and mentoring, I can help you. And I will help you to sit and, and just guide you. It's so easy. It's so safe. You don't have to um, allow anybody that you don't want. You can choose before you click that you're going to accept any person's booking. So it's really safe. And yeah. Great. So, the, anything that you got lying around your house that you're not using. Now, often people, one thing I do know is South Africans have got like 10 cell phones for, for every South African or two, five cell phones for every South, South African. Put, advertise them in your local, on your local Facebook page and get, get some money for those, those old phones. Somebody else can appreciate those phones. And, and, you've got some money in your pocket. And if you don't know what it's worth, go through junk mail and OLX and get some ideas and pricing. So those are just, those are just some extra things. Um, yeah, don't, don't wait until you have to sell those things. Because sometimes we wait so long when we have financial struggles that, you, that, that it's almost too late to start selling those things. And then when you, you start selling your stuff, it, it almost feels embarrassing that you're getting rid of, of things in your house just to get money. Don't ever get into that situation. So where you are right now, identify the things that you're really, truly not using. Sell them off. And like Ross says, there are so many platforms that you can do that. And you know what? Maybe you need something else. Sell those things to buy that that you need. So that you don't have to use your credit card to buy what you need um, on, on, on your credit card. But sell the stuff that you don't use and, and do it like that. It's an amazing feeling. Once you start doing it, a whole new world opens up for you. Yes. Um, yeah, look, we are, we are really, really um, speaking our minds now. And I know that we are touching a few, a few, few little corners because... The last thing I want to mention on this particular slide is, is the giving part. And one of the things that, that we've, we've been indoctrinated or taught from youngsters, is especially when you went to church, you were supposed to, supposed to give 10% to the church or the pastor. But the original, the original formula is you give yourself 10% first, and then you give 10% either to the church or the community or your parents, Somebody needs that 10%. And if you can't give 10% to yourself and 10% away, that is what happens is if your hands are closed, okay, you look like you're an oys gun fighting, eh? you can't receive and you can't give when your hands are closed. So that, that is one of the, if there's something that, that makes my heart warm and pump is when I know that I can give something to someone. You can give yourself gifts all the time. You're probably giving yourself so much every month that you can't think of paying or giving somebody else. And the feeling of giving yourself lost as long as you're doing it. But giving somebody something that you can see that they need is, is something that will pay you back. The amount of money that comes in from giving is, is, is amazing. So what I want to do is I want to take us to the next slide. And 
And thank you, Carol, for your feedback, for the personal message, um, is, is your mindset. And, and this, this I want to I just go through before, before I give Nelda the reins, is any, any habits that we've learned, bad spending habits, bad money habits, will, will not change if, you, if you've got more money. So we can come and show you, okay, here's a, here's a way to get money. Here's, I'm going to teach you how to trade. I'm going to teach you how to make your money more. Great, you can make another hundreds of thousands. And some of my traders made hundreds of thousands and, and some made a few million last year. But some of them went and spent the money, went and paid debts off. Now, Robert Kiyosaki will teach you, you don't, you, you, there's good debt and there's bad debt. We've always been thinking that debt is a bad thing. There is a good side to debt. There is a thing to have a good name. So we had people spending their money on all of these things. So it's definitely going to be a mindset for you. And maybe that course, and I, anyway, so ask, ask and you shall receive. But your mindset needs to change. And this is where I'm going to talk, uh, let Nalda just take over for the next few minutes and we'll be finishing off soon after that. Is <coughs> She got herself as um, accredited facilitator. facilitator and all of these courses are, ex except for one, the, the, the finance course, I actually went and did with her one day to see how clever these guys are. And the, this, is, this is good. So you can see they've got a list of courses that they present and the basic one which Nell is going to actually introduce to you, to you she, will, she will go through this, this information shortly. What I want to say is even if you do not have, have got a right in for any courses, hopefully something has hit home tonight, something has hit home and you can make some differences. Do take take the action. Do the action and, and make a difference because your family is depending on you to make these decisions for them because they don't know any better. Because we have never been educated. None of us got this education at school. So how can you become educated? Is by taking action and making things. It's, and sometimes it's just little tweaks, adjustments. I remember when the cars with carburetors were around, if you wanted that car to perform all the time, there were some adjustments and settings that you had to do. To, otherwise, you sound like, you know, you got an old crook. And often that's how we sound because of our, our finances. We are like crocky. Anyway, so now that's going to talk to you a little bit about the, about the course, the Bright Star Finance course. Thank you, Love. This course, I was really very excited when this course came out. Uh, it is a financial program. It's just like a one-day workshop. And it's really put together so well. And it's, the purpose of the workshop is to really empower you and to pro provide you with some tools to manage your money matters. I mean, we are not, and Bright Star is not a financial advisor, but we, we saw the need that people really need guidance as to where to start. Not everybody knows. Now, this little one-day finance program, Brightstar has already incorporated the uh, up to a standard with two unit standards. And the, um, the one is the NKF level three. And it's basically to help you to um, understand and do your own personal budget. And then the, re the other one is uh, on an NKF level five that's already part of this course. Um, and that is to... Um, I just wanted to actually work out a budget and a financial plan for you for the rest of for, 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 for a three month period based on a whole lot of crit, uh, a bit, a crit, certain criteria. So the nice thing about this course is if you go, um, as I say, it's a one day and it's a jam packed full one day course. The very first exercise you will be doing is to actually determine are you in currently in control or out of control of your finances. It is a brilliant realize or, or um, uh, exercise to realize for you to have self-realization of where you actually are and to determine where you are. 
then of course you can't do anything until you've changed your thoughts and really look at um, your thoughts around money. Where does it come from? I mean, I've shared with you where my first thoughts and belief come from in terms of, of money matters. And I had to change that. I had to change those beliefs. And we all have certain beliefs when it comes to, to money matters. Uh, to name one, um, you know, do you have enough money? Are you buying more things than, um, more things will not make you happier, buying more things. Sometimes we just want to buy just for the sake of buying. So there's a whole lot of concepts that we need to, um, to adhere to. We also need to determine the things that we buy. Is it things that we need or is it things that we really just want? Um, and these are things that we need to look at, we have to look at. And it's all things that we are now going th briefly going through some of the aspects of the course through, um, through with you. We need to be able to do a budget. You know, a couple of years ago when somebody said to me, Nelda, you need, where's your budget? You need to work on a budget. I was like, really? Are these people for real? I don't have time for a budget. I really honestly don't have time to sit down and do, and do these things. I mean, besides, you know, I know how much money comes into my bank account. I know what my expenses are. Guys, really, 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 if you want to change your life, your financial life and your financial matters, you've got to do this. You've got to know that every single day, this is how much I spent at this shop. This is how much I spent at that shop. This is all my, my slips. Your slips must be together. You've got to take action. You've got to start taking responsibility for these things. Have a little book and write all these things down. Maybe some of you are doing it already, but you're still not having any success. Guys, this course touched base of all the loopholes, let me tell you. Then we look at actually working out a budget. If you, and this is a brilliant exercise in the workshop where you are going to be challenged to write down, it's personal, you don't share it, but you write down all your monthly expenses. You've, you physically get trained to be able to do this, and this is part of the accreditation. Um, they are busy in the process of accrediting this course. Uh, it, it's a 12 month process. So what, if you guys, some of you guys want to do this course, great. Then 12 months from now, when the Bright Star Finance course is, uh, receives the accreditation, then I'm happy for a very small amount, um, 100 or 150 Rand to do a refresher. And then um, you pay for the accreditation. All the accreditations are normally 400 Rand and you can get accredited for this course that you have done. So to get back to what your, with regards to your expenses, you will be given a list. You'll write down all your expenses. You will be challenged as to where you can cut, how you can cut, and then you will be doing that physically in the workshop and then you will cut it even more. And it's very challenging, but it really opens up your mind to start thinking differently around what you have and what you can do. There's possibilities, guys. Sometimes there's, it doesn't look like there's any plan. Trust me, there is a plan. All right, then um, together we'll look at finding some solutions, what you can do in terms of um, changing some of these things. It's really a brilliant course. It'll put you back in control of your, of your money. Uh, on the screen, I think we've got thoughts, knowledge. Without knowledge, you've got nothing. Theme three will be choices. You will have to make some choices. Finding the balance is key. And then, of course, a plan of action. There's always a plan of action. And then having a control over your money and how to have control. So it's a real exciting course. It really changed my life. And... It changed Rule's life. <laughs> what do you expect to pay? $500? $5,000? What? $10,000? What would you <laughs> expect to pay for a course like this? <laughs> oh, it's, you don't know, it's too sweet. <laughs> so here we go. Yes, yes, the real prices is a price for the um, international people, and there's a price for South Africans. It's more or less the same price, except that one is uh, the books to be sent will be obviously a little bit more expensive. So there you go. For Americans, international clients, hundred dollars, and the book gets posted to you. So you get a, a book in the mail with the, all the exercises, and this is awesome. It was an awesome course for the South Africans. That's including the postage. 
1490. So. And if you do it at our facility in Cape Town, of course, we would love to have you here. We would also include for that money your, all your teas, coffees, and a lunch. So do join us. I can also do it online. And we can do it as a group online as well. We can even do it one-on-one -on -one online also. It really, we want to bring this information to you. We want to make your life easier. We want to make you be able to have at least 30% on your budget extra for you to do other things with uh, every month. And you would now tell me, now that's just not possible. I've tried this, I've done it. Let me tell you, it is possible. We are living proof of that. So with the international people, yes, the book will be, will be sent to you. We will post it. Uh, I will DHL it to you once you have it. We can again, once everybody's got their, their, their books, we can also do it on an online platform as well. It can be done. So you just let us know, send a rule a personal message and we take it from there. Any other questions if you I've, feel... Uh, I've put Nala's number on the bottom of the box there. So send her message. We're planning to do this in the week of the 23rd to the 20, uh, sorry, 24th to the 26th. So whoever doesn't attend physically will be able to attend online. Yeah. So you'll be able to sit in um, online. It's a, it's a full day from nine in the morning. No, from eight until four o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Eight until four o'clock. Yeah. So um, Americans, we will accommodate. And yeah. Canadians, we'll accommodate your yeah. time. For the international people, what we can do, we can break it over. We can, um, yeah, break it into two. You have, have to wait for your books first. Yeah, yeah. First of all, you'll have to wait for your books. Once everybody's got their books, then we can also do it over two days. So we'll do maybe three hours the one day and then three hours the following day. And we can work on the time slots. We'll, we'll treat it as, yeah, we'll, we'll just discuss it and brainstorm it and see how we can, we can do that for you guys. Right, so I'm, I will, um, for you folks that haven't got Nala's number, I'm sure most of you have got it by now. I'm just going to add a, a, a little slide in there. If you folks got any questions, just type in that little box below. And um, I'm just going to put a number here. The, let's get the right number. That's right. That would be the last slide. You want to write that number down or take a picture of it. And if you guys feel at any point in time that you don't want to do the course, which we obviously advise you to, then, and, but if you feel that you, you're already there, you just need a little bit of guidance, I also do one on one mentoring. Uh, I have what I call your girlfriend online, not your girlfriend, your girlfriend. And I will help you to uh, determine some goals, set some smarter goals. And I will, you know, we can do that online or one on one to help you to get to where you need to be. So if you want to do the, the online goal setting free in terms of your, your um, finances, then I can also assist you with that. Yeah, all the calls will be done on Zoom, so you can do a free 15-minute consultation with Nalda. Just set up an appointment, and then she will do the, that for you. All right, so hope you folks have found benefit. There's probably a lot of other things that we could have mentioned, but I'm also seeing the feedback from some of the people. Some of it's private, and some of it's set on Zoom. Cutting costs for 2020 vision in 2020 mm. you need to see further you need to see bigger picture get rid of the clutter get rid of the debt if you want to start paying debts off start the small ones first start the clothing accounts those smaller ones pay the smaller ones this is what happened is when i met nalda and i'm just going to say this in closing when i met her uh, i was like as broke as a church mouse and I said I'm, I'm back in debt I've started all over again and I, I wrote I showed her the list of debts and I made sure that any extra money I got from anything I did I didn't spend it on myself I went and paid some of it back and I made sure that my credit card payments also were more than the monthly payments if you're paying less than your credit card you know you're in trouble so 
also make sure you're paying your credit card back and put your credit card away and give it to someone, your wife or your husband or, or someone that can hide it and you, that you can't use it. I know you can still log in, use it, but there's less temptation using it. Um, everybody wants, wants some good kind of debt, but that can get you into bad, bad debt. So hope you folks have a great evening and great afternoon and we're glad you, you guys could sit in. Mm. Keep in touch with us, guys. We'll, we'll chat soon. We're about to do another webinar a little bit um, in the middle of the week. We will share the information. Thanks, guys. Thanks for giving me time to chat as well. And the, by the way, this dealing with the what to pay off first is also part of the course. Very important because there we're going to look at interest. And uh, yeah, so thank you very much for having us and looking forward to your messages.